All right, guys, KB32 here, check in out. We're sitting at the review table in front of us. We're going to be taking a look at this guy right here from the guys over there at Primary Arms. This is their new PLX cantilever scope mount. First of all, let me just say, uh, I have actually been working with this guy right here. This is the, the PLX128. This is their new offering uh, to kind of uh, replace the older one. Uh, it's a 30 millimeter tube. This thing's really tough. The glass is impeccable. And uh, we'll be doing a review on this thing. I'm gonna shoot it a little bit more. This guy is their M8M, which is set up in meters versus the uh, yardage. Uh, I do have one in yardage that is coming. And uh, it is one of, the, in my mind, the greatest reticle ever designed. Uh, <laughs> this thing is uh, dead nuts with a 77 grain out to uh, 600 yards without any issues. The pretty cool thing is we've got some uh, throw levers that are designed to be uh, replaced on this thing, so you do have some options. Well, anyway, let's talk about this. This is the PLX scope mount, and I am terribly impressed with it. And I want to go over some of the details, and I want to show you some other things. Okay, so here we go. All right, so here's the box. You can get this guy in a 30 millimeter, uh, 34 millimeter, and zero MOA. And I'm assuming, and I, I haven't found it on their website, that you can get it in a 20 MOA. Now, this is kind of rhetorical for some individuals out there, but I'm kind of for those people who may not know. Um, hey, this is their uh, Optics Planet new handguard uh, by Tribe Defense, and it's uh, magnesium alloy. It's very light material. I'm working with this thing. Uh, we are uh, putting it through some paces, and I'll give you a review on this very shortly here, but uh, Optics Plan has got some really good stuff coming out. Uh, let's talk about this. All right, 20 MOA versus a zero MOA. All right, so what zero MOA means is that there is no elevation built into the scope mount. In other words, there is a, uh, an alignment between the scope and the barrel with no elevation built in. And what that means is like at 100 yards, you're actually going to have an intersection uh, movement between the bullet and where this guy is zeroing in at. Now, you don't necessarily need any built-in MOA in a 1 to 8, but if you have like a 6 to 30 or something like that, or you're shooting out to some major distances, you need to have some elevation built into it because there's not a of travel in the turrets. I hope you're catching this. So anyway, what happens is with the 20 MOA, the and I'm, I'm, this is uh, kind of enhanced, but anyway, what happens is the scope mount will have this built into it, which rises, raises the barrel up to increase uh, your ability to reach out and touch whatever you need to hit at a thousand yards or a mile or whatever. So in any case, because of the travel that's not built into a scope, sometimes you want to use a 20 MOA scope mount. All right, so we're going to go there. Uh, also, uh, one of the things we talk about that some people may be new to shooting, uh, the size of the tube. So a lot of the, well, 35, 34, 30 um, are standard uh, sizes pretty much. This is a 30 millimeter tube, which means you need to order your scope mount at 30 millimeters, okay? Uh, for example, this is a uh, kinetic development. This is a QD mount, which is really nice. Uh, what happens with this guy is that it will actually go onto your uh, rail. Oops, okay. I'm gonna make a clown on myself here. These are made right here uh, in the USA also, which is one of the most important parts. But you put that down, and what it does is it clamps right on there. There's no movement. I've actually got one set up for a uh, RMR or a, a uh, aim point, uh, the little one, and it actually moves back and forth. I'm not really happy about that. I'm going to reach out to them and talk to them about that. So in any case, uh, so you got QD amounts. I would like to see a QD mount built into this guy in, in the near future, uh, but this is a 34 millimeter ring. As you can see, it's a lot bigger. So uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> I digress. So let's talk about this real quickly, put this away. Most important part about this guy, and you can tell I've had a few cups of coffee this morning, made in the USA. Uh, bought this one because I just needed a scope mount real quickly off of Amazon, which Amazon pretty much everything they sell comes out of China. But in any case, uh, this thing was Warhunt USA, and I, I'm pretty sure that it's Warhuntusa. Warhuntusa. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, 
One of the things that you are going to find is that if you find a scope mount that's made in the USA or pretty much any other product, one is the quality assurance is going to be a lot better. But secondly, you're going to be paying a little bit more for it. This is $29, uh, 20 MOA, um, and does not have any Thing built into it, but you're going to talk about something made in the USA, like this guy right here, uh, American Fence. I love these guys; they just make good products. Uh, you're going to pay 150, uh, 200 dollars. This thing, I think, right here was about 280 something. I can't remember exactly what I paid for it. Did a review on this guy a long, long, long time ago uh, because I was building the perfect rifle, and this kind of went along with that whole series about the QD attachment points. Somebody made a comment about with the premium or the platinum build that I did, I had to back up iron sights on it. And without having a QD attachment on the scope mount, sometimes that may take you a while to get it off of there. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to open it up. It does come in a box just like this wrapped up. The cool thing I like about primary arms is they've standardized all of their set screws. So on their new scopes, uh, or the scope mounts or uh, magnified optics, you're going to find that you're going to have a torque wrench head, and they include these. They have these laying around, so you put one in your pocket. You don't have to worry about it. You can adjust these things. The one thing that I do would like to see are a set of spec uh, torque specs, particularly for the rings as well as these guys right here. Um, I pretty much just torque these down to about 23 and a half inch pounds. Uh, when I do a mount. So anyway, also you got this guy right here. This is one and I'm going to be mounting the, the uh, I've got a, a the Gold Line series, which I, is made in the Philippines, which is one of my new favorite scope with the Athena reticle. Uh, very usable distance on that thing. The eye relief is incredibly stupid and we'll be using this guy on that. But in any case, um, you've got the uh, what do you call it? CNC areas out right here, reducing the weight 6.9 ounces on this guy. One of the things I do love, look at these screws. I don't even know what these things are made of, but I like them. They look cool. Some type of metal. I think they're steel. I have to put a magnet on and see. Uh, I will tell you that like the Warren Tactical, their uh, screw holes are sleeved with steel, so there's no chance of stripping these out. Uh, make sure, I, like I said, I wish there was a set of torque specifications for these things. They may have them online with the instructions. You could download the PDF. Most likely that's the case. But overall, you've got two locking lugs down here that fit in between a 1913 rail. These screws right here are not tethered, so be careful when you pull them out. And also, there is a washer on there. Make sure you don't lose the washer. Those guys that caught me on that uh, platinum build with the Geisley handguard and missing washer, good eye. Man, I'll tell you what. Um, I'm probably going to have to make a run to Home Depot to get to pick up another washer. I do like it when it's perfect. And that's not quite perfect. And you guys picked up on that. All right, so what happens is, and let me read this to you. Five recoil lugs, including two machine integral lugs. All right, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's what your lug sections are. Uh, grade 12.9 hardware, capable of six point five thousand pounds of clamping force with proprietary corrosion resistant black e nye coating that's what that's called proprietary black e nye coating then we have machine billet 7075 aluminum like i said 6.9 ounces strong lightweight trust design i like it i like it a lot it reminds me a lot of a scale of works or there's a couple others out there uh Geisley makes a really good one but uh this thing is really really cool I like that. So if you see, what happens is you've got these little locking lugs right here. Uh, when you are mounting this guy, guys, and the cantilever goes to the front. I've seen people mount them like this. Uh, just saying. Uh, but you put it on here, and then what's going to you when you mount this to the upper receiver, not the handguard. You're going to push it all the way forward, and what that's going to do because the recoil goes to the back. If it's pushed to the forward position, you're not going to see any movement in there. There's a little bit of movement as it sits flush like that. Uh, that may be because of the uh, 1913 rail specs on here. I've normally found that the guys over there at Geisley, their hand guards, their specs, their M-lock openings are absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. All right. 
There it is, mounted to a handguard. You're gonna see that right there. Um, made in the USA. It does have the specs right here, or the uh, one and a half inch above the uh, rail section. Really, really cool. I like it. Um, it also does allow, if you see this right here, if you wanted to put backup iron sights on there, it gives you about uh, three quarters of an inch. So there you go. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. This is the PLX uh, scope mount from the guys up there, Primary Arms. It retails for $259. Yes, made in America, you're going to pay for it. But what you get is a higher quality uh, product and a uh, the good wealth of knowledge knowing that it was made in the USA. And for people who are questioning, this scope right here is made in Japan. There you go. That's a badass. Mm, I can't wait to put that out there and shoot it. All right, with that being said, guys, uh, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so. Support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless us men, women, uniform 24-7 for our freedom. Freedom's not free. That's a bad mamma jamma. Oh, yeah. Enjoy the, the uh, little slideshow. Y'all be good. I'm out of here.